How's everybody doing? It's a great day to be alive, isn't it? I'm here tonight under the umbrella of something called social responsibility with the concurrent underlying theme of take someone with you. Say it back to me. Statistically speaking, I should not be here. If you remember a film back in the day with comedian Steve Martin, it was called The Jerk, and one of the beginning lines in that film was, I was born a poor black child. Well, I was. And what I do now is, especially from where I've come from, I was reminded when I was a child that I wasn't supposed to have dreams. I wasn't supposed to achieve success. My dreams were taken. My vehicles weren't provided. Statistically, I should not be a PhD, but they forgot to tell me. Even during my childhood, there were days where this message was literally beaten to me. So tonight, I want to tell you what happened between that young little man, and I'm starting to hear, I can read some of your thoughts because I see you looking at the picture saying, that kid was handsome. <laughs> yeah, he was. The problem with my theory of getting people to understand the concept of taking someone with you is I'm going to suggest that the education system is not equitable. And that's the problem with Common Core. Common Core, in theory, is a wonderful thing, in theory. But the problem with that is that it suggests that all children have the same views and the same experiences. Not every child has a mom and a dad and a dog in the backyard and a beautiful house in the country. So how can we expect people to approach education the same way? Not every child has access to the most incredible teachers. Some of them get what's left over, and there's consequences for that. What I'm talking about is a shift in the way we approach children. One of the things I'm very blessed to do is, as now I train the trainers. Now I train the faculty. Now I train the administration to get excited about a concept that can make their jobs better, more fulfilling, while making a positive difference in the world. We have to do this. If you look at the demographics across the United States, they are not stagnant, they're changing. The projected views across the United States in 2020 is a little darker in the world, ladies and gentlemen. The problem is, right now, students of color in the United States are far below the national standards in terms of testing and performance. We can't handle them now. So if we don't make these changes with these projections, you're going to pay no matter what. When in reality, ladies and gentlemen, I want to pay my own way. Would you believe the number one mo mo variable that impacts student motivation and performance is hope? Seems complicated, doesn't it? But it's not. Sometimes you have to inspire your students and give them hope accompanied by a swift kick in the pants. Let me tell you about one of my students named Kayvon. We literally spoke about 10 minutes ago and he wanted me to know that he's extremely proud of me. He was in my intro to uh, psychology class, sat right in the front row, handsome young man, excited about my class, always somewhat prepared, and whenever I asked a question, his hand would go up. I'd call on him for the answer, and he had the answer. The problem is, every time he responded, he was wrong. <laughs> so I said to him, Kevin, listen, we got to have a talk after class because you're getting on my nerves. I said, why are you here in college? And he says, you know what, I really don't know. I have nothing else to do, and I have no problem working at McDonald's. I said, there's nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. I have friends who have made some really good careers there. However, I'm going to speak to you as if you were my own son. There are consequences for your decision. I said, do you have a girlfriend? He said, well, in fact, I have two. <laughs> I said, welcome to the college experience. <laughs> and I said, one of those days you're going to have what I have, and that is what incredible woman who you aim to honor. And I've learned a lot at that point of being married 25 years about women. They like to feel special. They like to know they're the only one. They like to go for walks. They like an occasional dinner. And they said, the problem with your plan is yours is going to be limited to the dollar menu. And that's going to get old, my brother. He says, I said, I'm not done yet. I said, let us pray. What are we going to pray for? We're going to pray you don't have kids. 
He said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, kids, especially boys, like to brag about their fathers. And when they come over, they're going to meet mom, they're going to meet dad. What's your dad do? Works at McDonald's. I don't want that. Yes, you do. Your behavior is not compatible with your words. He says, I'm going to change. I don't believe you. Next exam, he aces the exam. I reject his paper seven times because he wanted the A. I pull him aside, I said, if you continue to have this educational epiphany, I'm going to buy you dinner, and it's not going to be at McDonald's. He makes every one of my exams look simple, aces the final with a note at the end of the exam, so when's dinner? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present dinner. I was successful with Kayvon because I presented a situation which he subscribed to. And it's something that is missing in the pedagogy of faculty across this beautiful country. Is we don't present ideas to our students that they can understand and they can relate to. It's called relevance. And he gravitated towards something which he felt was familiar. He also felt my sense of commitment to his success. That's critical to a guy like me. I need to know you're going to be there for me. Not just that afternoon. And I was also able to look through his lens and therefore impact and change my pedagogy to meet his needs versus meeting mine as the instructor. Sometimes we have situations where we have to step up and show the power of our education through our modeling. If you look up my name and Google it, you'll also find some articles because in 2008 I had a noose hung on my door at work. Pretty traumatizing at the same time also very inspiring. As a black belt, I was provided a choice. Get angry, react, and instead, I chose to meet this young man and forgive him. Yes, he faced jail time. Yes, he faced 450 hours of community service, and I offered to do that service with him to send the message and the power of what education is supposed to be is modeling what you are seeking through the actions that, which provide an atmosphere of inspiring those people you want to bring with you. It was a wonderful story. And I told him because he turned himself in, don't remember the pain you caused my family. Remember what you did right and pay this experience forward. Part of the process of taking someone with you. I am one of the founders of Central New York's only nonprofit called Joseph's Experience. It's the only nonprofit in our area which does bring people with them on a regular basis. It's a wonderful opportunity to make a huge impact for people who believe they have no voice, similar to the students I serve, similar to the students I once was. I'm also doing an incredible bicycle ride traveling to every county of New York State. And what I'm doing in every county is I'm sending a message to people, maybe this young lady from Binghamton who has neuroblastoma, that she suffers alone no more. Maybe it's taking the time to give a $1,000 bike to a young man who had leg cancer and let him know that he suffers alone no more. Maybe it's traveling out to Cattaraugus County, shaving my head and standing with 50 deputies in honor of the undersheriff, and letting them know that blue lives do matter. Maybe it's also spending some time in the North Country with a gentleman who also happens to be a sheriff's deputy and takes veterans down to Arlington, courtesy of the honor flights every year. And everywhere I go, I wear this bag like I'm wearing now, what is called my bag of honor. And it is full of items and dreams that people have submitted and asked me to carry them with them, with me, because they believe no one cares and they have no voice. Sometimes it's sending a message to people like an Ida County Deputy Kurt Wyman who was killed in the line of duty in 2011. And the Sheriff's Department asked me to take him with me as I travel. Maybe it's spending time in Roswell Park with Deb Clark, letting her know that despite being tethered to a tree which I've never seen in my life, that she suffers alone no more. Maybe it's taking the time to meet an officer in New York City who the day before we met him lost his dog to leukemia and gave me his shield and said, will you carry this in honor of my dog? And lastly, one of my Taekwondo students at 18 months old had the tumor the third the sides of his body. 
lost his hair to chemotherapy and gave me one of his locks of hair. Take me with you. It is an honor to do what I do. One of the things I want you to know is the power of take me with you is here tonight. And I tell teachers when I train them, imagine a world where you get up every day and recognize that tomorrow was promised to no one. Imagine waking up tomorrow and recognize that there's absolutely unequivocally nothing special about anybody in this room, but you are unique. If you recognize those values, imagine the kind of day you will have. I have a really interesting situation. I've been talking about taking people with you, and there was a person in my life who decided that my voice needed to be heard. She's a teacher, and she wanted to bring me with her. Then I had a very unique epiphany. You know what? It's not often where the student has the opportunity to take the teacher with them. She gave me a voice. She gave me authenticity. She gave me class. She gave me hope. She gave me a vehicle to aspire to academic success and personal growth. My reaction to that, ladies and gentlemen, not only did I take that teacher with me, I married her. Have a good night.